A warm welcome to VTU e Sikshana e Learning Center. So, this video is going to describe about the module 3 of artificial neural network, the continuation of the previous video. We will get into this topic. So, as we are aware about that, we have come across with the radial BIOS function network and uh, the simple interpolation examples we have seen. In that we have come across with the different parameters where the spread factor sigma is equal to 1 and spread factor sigma is equal to 0.3. So, the difference which have been yielded an undulating interpolatant as shown in the previous video. So, that we must aware about that some of the important factors about that. By making the spread factor smaller, the function becomes increasingly a non-smooth. So, the primary object, the primary objective being to be achieve a 100 percent of mapping accuracy and we have to get 100 percent mapping accuracy on the 10 data points rather than the smoothness of the interpolation. So, that the derivations of an interpolant provides a natural measure of the slope and helps to quantify its oscillator behavior. So, that by taking the derivatives of these functions, the squaring them to make them positive everywhere and then measuring the area under those curves provides a nice measure of non-smoothness, the greater the area and more non-smooth the function. So, that this is brought out very clearly from the past figures which have been seen in the past video. So, that the area under the square of derivatives of this functions which have been clearly mentioned that the smoothness and as relatively a small area under its square derivatives. Whereas, we are going to see about we have seen about two different parameters of the spread factor function of sigma is equal to 1 as have much smoother when compared with the spread factor value sigma is equal to 0.3. So, that we are going to face some of the problems from this particular thing. So, we will discuss about those problems from this video. Such an oscillatory behavior is going to be undesirable if one wants the network to be generalized well. It is not possible to make generalized in an appropriate way, so that the behavior it becomes an undesirable one. For a better generalization, which can be achievable with smooth functions, which are fitted to the noisy data. So, in addition, for the better generalization, which can be fitted to a noisy data, we can observe from the exact interpolator equation that the number of basic functions in the expansion, the number of basic functions in the expansion is equal to that of number of data points, is equal to that of the number of data points. So, clearly this too is undesirable. Since we know that the real world data set can be extremely larger and therefore, the computational and storage requirements for the exact interpolator equation can exploit very quickly. Such a way, so computational and storage requirements for an exploited very quickly, such a way, these problems are going to be get arised. How to overcome this? There is a solution for this radial bias function network. What is that? In order to circumvent these problems, the radial bias function network model typically incorporates one or more of the following modifications. I am going to specify the three modifications over here. So, we choose the number of bias function to be some number which can be Q is always lesser than that of capital Q. So, the number of bias function should be lesser than that of the Q and we also no longer restrict the center of the bias function mu. 
which is to be fixed to the data point value so that there are uh, we can make triangle parameters of this model so these are make some of the triangle parameter models in a similar way this can spread each of the bias functions which is going to be permitted to be a different and triangle which is going to be a trainable data so that trainable data has to be given in an appropriate way by learning can be done this trainable learning can be done either by supervisory or unsupervisory techniques so or else by using a function which can be called as superposition which can be called as uh, superposition and a bias is going to be included in the output neuron to illustrate this generalization we need to solve the xor problems by including a bias term that is going to be considered over there once again i am going to repeat the solution with the modifications of this bias function network model typically which is going to incorporate this modifications okay so no longer restrict sorry choose a number of bias function to be some number q must be less than capital q and no longer restrict the centers of the bias functions to be fixed to the data point values which is going to make a trainable parameters of the model and spreads of this each of the bias function is permitted to be different and trainable it must be different and trainable so that what happen learning can be done either by the supervisory techniques or unsupervisory techniques with the help of that a bias function can be included in the output neuron which can be easy for us to solve or we have to solve the xor problem by including a bias term let me see about the interpolarization with fewer than q bias functions the interpolarization with fewer than q bias functions for the moment we will assume that the centers and spread of this bias functions have been show how optimized and fixed how we can optimize and fix uh, we then do uh, determine the hidden output neurons weights in a way similar to the procedure adopted in the interpolarization case so assume the centers and spreads of this bias functions are optimized and fixed okay and proceed to determine the hidden output neurons hidden output neuron weights using the procedure adopted in the interpolarization case this is going to be made into consideration so that we can solve the problem how we can to formalize this consider the interpolating a set of data point with a number q of bias function less than that of the number q of training data points okay so the bias function q must be less than that of the data points q or training data points q so this results the exact interpolarator equation which can be modified as which can be modified as f of x f of x summation i is equal to 1 to the small q with the weight matrix pi of x minus xi so that what happen at present we are dealing with the approximation problem which we wish to solve in a least square sense for this we can recall the familiar squared error function already we have been come across with epsilon is equal to or no over 2 summation k is equal to 1 to trained data points q of dk minus summation of i is equal to 1 to the bias function small q weight matrix of pi of x suffix k minus xi whole to the power of square so which is going to be taken into consideration with the help of that we can compute the optimal weights so which computes the squared error at the output neuron where the summed overall q data points so that what happened to compute the optimal weights in a least square sense 
we differentiate this expression with respect to the weight and set it to equal so that it heals the expression as we are going to differentiate with respect to weight and setting it to equal to 0 so that we are going to make a function we are going to get a function that summation k is equal to 1 to train to data points value q of pi of k i summation of the q small q value which is going to yield about the expression summation k is equal to 1 to q d k of pi of k i where the pi of uh, sorry the pi transpose of pi w is equal to pi transpose into d as already we have decided this value already we have discussed this value where pi is equal to a pi matrix which have been given over there the pi matrix is going to be present over there so with d and w as already defined so that it can permit us to recast this matrix into the form of pi transpose pi of w is equal to pi transpose of d correct so it has been already defined in the previous class so that we are going to take that one and we are going to define that value is going to be pi transpose into d so that which can yield a different terminology over there pseudo inverse so now Note that the pi is now a value of the trained data point into the small q value, isn't it or not? So that it is going to form a matrix and is therefore not a square. So however, so this pi of transfer into pi is a square. And if the letter matrix produced is a non-singular, so we may go ahead and invert it to solve this particular system. So that this gives a solution to the weight matrix W is equal to W is equal to pi transverse of pi minus inverse into pi transverse D. So that we are going to get this W is equal to. So the last equation which I have defined over there W is equal to pi matrix into D okay such a way we are going to derive that one the pseudo inverse the pseudo inverse is equal to the same value which is going to get present over there we are going to replace this value with pseudo inverse so this is not a square this is going to be a pseudo inverse which is going to be useful for us to solve the solution which is going to be in a singular value decomposition for that value we are going to do this particular pseudo inverse okay so let me discuss the pseudo inverse in the further things so the matrix pseudo inverse to a square it is a matrix a q cross q matrix small q cross capital q matrix however we can see that it plays the role of inverse and hence it is given the special name of pseudo inverse okay so uh, note that uh, although the pi transverse of pi the pi transverse of pi then which is going to be equal to or similar to that of one being the identity matrix sorry it's going to be i not one it's going to be i when it's going to be i being an identity matrix okay or it can be it sometimes it may not be i in general it may be there so in practice the matrix equation is going to be solved using a technique which is going to be called a singular value decomposition singular value decomposition understand the singular value decomposition is going to be get classified it's with the technique is going to be get used over there so there are two observations we make before moving on to a similar or simultaneous simulation examples so note that it is a straightforward to introduce a particular bias term weight not into an approximation equation approximation equation where function f of x is equal to the summation i is equal to 1 to q which is going to be taken the function and which is going to be deal about the value where the q 
is going to be lesser than that of the trained data points. It's going to be lesser than that of the trained data points. Understand? So, what happened? This bias can be observed into the weight matrix as usual by the augmentation. So, the bias function is going to be generally chosen to be the Gaussian. It's going to be chosen to be the Gaussian. So, that pi of x minus xi is equal to exponential of minus x minus xi modulus square by 2 sigma i square, which is going to be the term where which has a center at a data point xi and where a distinct spread factor, which is going to be called as ji has now become included to permit each bias function to has its own spread. So, this gives greater freedom in the approximation. Such a way it is going to be get generated. This is the two observations which has to be get observed by us so that it will be easy to understand about the particular terminology. Let me discuss about the generalization function. So, how it can be generalized further? In what way we are going to? In how, in how it is going to get generalized? This Gaussian radial bias function can be generalized further to include the case where one permits arbitrary uh, covariance matrices of Ki, in which case the basic function takes the equation or it is going to take about the expression which is going to be looks like pi of x minus x i is equal to exponential of minus 1 by 2 x minus x i transpose into kernel function inverse of x minus x i. So, this is going to be the thing which is going to be deals about that one. So, that the radial bias function network such as uh, those defined by the bias functions are capable of universal approximator. It is going to be capable for the universal approximator. So, this is going to be universally approximation is going to be achievable using a superposition of the localized function. So, the radial function bias network defined by the bias functions are going to be capable of this universal approximation. So, that this appeals to our intuitions, it is going to appeal to our intuitions since we know that universal approximation is achievable using a superposition to localized function. Okay. So, in the TTH what happened, there is an important result that the radial bias uh, function networks have the best approximation property. This states that in the set of approximating the functions that the radial bias function networks are capable of generating, capable of generating, there is no, there is one function that has the minimum approximation error. So, this states that in the set of approximating function, the radial bias function networks are capable of generating there is one function that has the minimum approximation error for any given function which has to be get approximated, which has to be get approximated, such a way it is going to be get present over there. So, these are the general, generalized uh, further, further generalization about this particular RBFNs. Let me see about the simulation example. So, approximation of a noisy data set with fewer than Q bias function. We are going to deal about this one. Okay. Uh, it is worthwhile taking a look at a MATLAB simulation of this interpolization example as already we have been considered about that one. So, just have a recap about that one. Go through that and you can see that it will be easy for us to understand how actually it is going to be uh, did with the simulation. So, that uh, now we can consider that approximating the 10 nice data points with the fewer uh, than the 10 uh, basic functions. Uh, for example, assume that in this case what we can do, the data points are equally spaced samples from the interval. Okay? So, we can take minus 2 pi comma 2 pi and are general, uh, generated by adding a noise to the function 2 sin of x plus x. 
already we have taken that one isn't the function f of x has been taken as 2 sin of x plus x. So, 5 basic functions were chosen for this purpose of approximation. How many? 5. 5 uh, basic functions has to be chosen for the purpose of approximation which is half the number of the data points. Okay. So, these were selected to be centered at data points as uh, 1, 3, 5, 7 and 9. We can take this 5 data points. Okay, 5 samples, basic functions. 1, 3, 5, 7 and 9. If the data points are numbered from 1 through 10 from left to right on the graph, left to right on the graph, in order to find the weights, the pseudo inverse data already we come across over there, the pseudo inverse has to be computed. So, in this case, the pi will be an uh, what I can say that it, it will be a lambda cross 5 matrix, it can be lambda cross 5 matrix data. So, that uh, the pseudo inverse is going to be order of 5 into 10. In this case, the pseudo inverse can be computed directly from the above equation which have been specified from this. Okay, From this we can find that one, we can find the particular pseudo inverse, we can compute that. So, that the results of approximations are going to be shown uh, in the particular figure. This is going to be the figure which have been showing the data over the simulated data for four different values okay as sigma is equal to 0.5 and sigma is equal to 1 this is a spread uh, sp spread factor which is going to be taken sigma is equal to 5 and sigma is equal to 10 which is going to be shown like this okay such a we can come to know about that so uh, here we have to notice that for a very small value of spread value spread the network function becomes increasingly non-smooth already we have come across over there while trying to interpolate all the bias function centers more accurately as the spread increases to 1 the approximation becomes smoother however for very large value of spread the network function is going to be over smooth and can no longer approximate the underlying functions that is going to be a problem which is going to get present over. Let we see about that then we can see about the data value. So, the simulation values which have been shown over here come to the MATLAB code, the MATLAB code which have been shown over there. Okay, So, we will see about this MATLAB code Okay, by after seeing this simulation paths. So, when spread is equal, spread factor is equal to 0 0.5, they are going to see about that the triangles have been mentioned over here, triangles, okay. The factor, the smooth factor, we can observe that this is going to be present over there in a fine value and the interpolate are going to be look like this. When we come across over there in this, we can identify the smoothness of that, the triangle values which have been present over there, the fine line is going to be looking up to this and the thick line shows somewhat it is going to be smoothened when compared with the spread is equal to 0.5 and spread is equal to 1. You can, you can see the difference of the smoothness and coming to the next when we are going to have the triangles as shown over here the triangles have been entered uh, rounded off with blue color and the fine line is going to be remains almost the same and when we are going to increase the spread factor from 1 to 5 it is almost is going to be so smooth over here almost it is going to be so smooth. So, when we are going to increase the same sigma value, spread factor value is going to be 10. So, find this triangles remains, we are going to be taking that and the fine line remains almost in the same way whereas the smoothness if you are going to see about that is almost it is going to be linear, it is almost it is going to be linear. 
So, it shows that very clearly that when spread factor increases, the system is going to be so smooth, obviously it is going to be increasing its smoothness. So, approximating the 10 NICE data points with 5 basic elements, we have made this and it is going to be so smooth over there. Understand? I hope that it is so clear for you people to understand about this particular process. So, let me discuss about a MATLAB code for an radial BIOS function network. So, radial BIOS function network, we are going to take Q is equal to 10 points. So, 10 data points, NICE data points have been taken over there. We are going to fix that NICE is equal to 0 0.6. So, an additive NICE level has been taken over there. X line space has been given and X sample spaces have been given. We are going to generate the noise, scattered noise, generated the noise and we are going to generate Y data as well as number of test data have been given over there. Sample space has been given and test data, test data X and Y has been given over there. Understand? And we are going to fix that sigma is equal to 5. So, when we are going to set a common spread function, basic function, sigma is equal to 5, we are going to have the particular process and we are going to compute that the value is going to be providing in approximate levels. So, which is going to be given the particular set of the data, which is going to be providing a generating approximate value, which is going to be sh as shown in the simulated outcome, how it has been given over. The, this is a test code for this MATLAB code to verify that one for sigma value is equal to 5. So, this list the essential code segment for computing the results. So, the number of data points Q and noise level, noise, uh, level, uh, noise level uh, Q values are going to be get set over there. And the X data sample space often equally spaced points in the interval um, from minus 2 pi to plus 2 pi. So, that the targets, the X test data and Y test data points are responsible effectively defined in the x comma d comma test x comma test y as you are going to see about that one test x test y which have been given over there test x has been given over there and d and q pi value has been given mentioned over there all the values as i spread uh, as i specified everything has been specified in the code so that the spread factor sigma is also going to be get set to 5 so the matrix pi is generated row wise, one row for each point, one column for each BIOS function, such a way it is going to be get generated. So, the BIOS function which is going to be sent is are selected alternatively by introducing an extra index k to skip the order, extra index k to skip the order. So, that what happened, the alternative data points as j goes from 1 to q by 2 is going to be get generate that one, ok. So, the matrix pseudo inverse is going to be computed as it is going to be get present over there, the pseudo value is going to be get generated, computed by its defining equation, ok, which have been not by an uh, 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 support vector SVD, which is going to be given by the computed by a defining equation. So, that the weight pseudo, the, sorry, the weights are going to be get stored in W by multiplying the particular pseudo value, which is going to be get multiplied, ok. So, that it is going to give uh, pseudo inverse into the target vector D, such a way it is going to provide the target vector D value, ok. So, to compute this final approximation, first the test pi matrix, the test pi matrix have been taken over there, test pi matrix at this level, the test pi matrix is going to be evaluated in a fashion similar to pi, similar to pi, one row for each test data, one column for each bias center. Finally, we are going to approximate and it is going to be stored in the vector f, the function f with the particular value. Okay, by multiplying the pi test into the vector or uh, weight vector w and it is going to be get stored in this particular value. So, f test is equal to f is equal to test pi into w. Finally, it is going to be get approximated. Such a way this code is going to be get written and it is going to be get simulated to provide the exact simulation results. Understand? Such a way it is going to be get providing its value. Let us come to uh, uh, find an example 
how the radial function uh, radial bias function network classifier is going to solve the XOR problem how it is going to be we can illustrate it is going to be illustrated with this particular uh, table which have been specified in this particular slide. So, to illustrate the way in which a radial bias function network can solve the classification problem we revisit the XOR problem. Okay? So, already we people are aware about that XOR operation. This example will also serves to show how a bias term is included at the output linear uh, output linear neuron such a way it is going to be present over there. Take point x1, x2, x3, x4 we are going to take 4 different values x1, x2, x3, x4 and we are going to take that one. So, it is going to be 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. So, as we are aware about that 0 x or 0 will become 0 because when both inputs are common output becomes 0 and if uh, both inputs are differ output is high level and both are in same it is going to be 0 such a way it is going to get present that one is not it or not. So, the 4 data points for this XOR problem has been shown in the table. So, the radial bias function network classifier which is used to or you which is assumed to have two bias functions which is going to be centered at data point 1 and 4 in the about table if you are going to see about that 1 and 4 if you are going to see x1 and x4 both are going to be 0 0. So, that we are going to take that condition and we are going to take that particular expression as pi of 1 pi of 2 two expressions are going to be taken into consideration understand. So, where the sigma is equal to 1 this two bias function have been plotted which is going to be shown like this this is going to be get plotted this is a visualizing the bias function how it is going to be looks over here. So, the two Gaussian bias functions centered at 0 comma 0 and 1 comma 1 that is going to be shown over here ok this is a exact picture visualization of this particular one ok. So, which is going to be consisting of this two values ok Gaussian uh, bias function centered at 0 comma 0 and 1 comma 1 that is going to be shown over here. From this we are going to see about this basic function centered at data points of 1 and 4 how actually this architecture RBFN architecture which is going to be taken into consideration to solve the XOR classification problem. So, this architecture is going to be easy for us to understand about that one. So, with the function to classify or to clarify uh, uh, the I, uh, further idea the radial bias uh, function network that implements this classifier which is going to be shown in this particular figure how it is going to be uh, insist the point 1 and 4 how it is going to be doing this function. So, that how the approximate is going to be generated by superimposing the basic function that is going to be shown as f of x over here. Let me discuss about that two inputs x and x1 and x2 when both are going to be 0 it is going to be get cross multiplies and it is going to provide the weights and it is going to do it it will plus 1. When both are going to be 1 1 obviously how it is going to be get doing the process and it is going to provide that one. So, it is going to be enter into the hidden neuron and it is going to be transferring into weights and the weights are going to be get summed and it is going to provide an output at the function. So, this function which is going to be del uh, which is going to be represented as f of x is equal to f of x is equal to w0 plus w1 both the weights are going to be get taken into consideration the exponential of this and exponential of this one which is going to get taken into consideration such a way we are going to take the particular thing where here the x is a subset of radial function that has to be understand over there ok and we have the d value w value and pi value. So, here we are going to take that d is equal to 0 1 1 1 0 transfer and w is equal to w0 w1 w2 transfers and q is equal to the matrix have been given over there. One can compute this pseudo inverse with the help of this particular data. So, that the pseudo inverse value is going to be get transferred into this so that the weights are going to be taken into consideration and the final weights are going to be looks like this. With the help of that we can take the simulated outcome the visualization of the solutions which are going to be looks like that. 
So, the radial function network, the radial bias function network approximating the surface generated to solve the XOR classification problem, which is going to be shown also it is it is intersection with the binary indicator function. Always if you, can, you can observe that it is going to indicate very clearly about the binary indicator function. Isn't it or not? So, with this parameter specified, the approximating surface generated by this radial bias function network is going to be portrayed as looks like in this picture. Okay. Also shown, this is the intersection of this bipolar indicator function with this surface. So, the counters are shown for the function which goes to minus 1 exactly at 0, 0 and 1, 1. So, such is such a thing is going to be goes through over here. Okay, now 0, 0 and 1, 1. Such a way it is going to be get present over. You can understand about this 0, 0 and 1, 1. Such a way it is going to be get providing the function. The function which is goes to exactly minus 1, such a way it is going to be enter into the particular value. Understand? So, this is what the actual solution which have been proposed by this particular thing. Let me go for the next uh, possessed problems, okay. regularization theory root to RBFNs. So, this is going to be called as regularization theory. So, the derivation if you are going to see about this, the proposed problems originally identified by Hadmund in the context of partial differential equation. One thing we have to understand the derivations of a general case of radial bias networks from the theory of regularization comes primarily from the work of uh, griosis. So, the problem of function approximation which is going to form a sparse data is going to be essential and an ill posed problem. So, this ill posed problem were originally identified by the particular scientist Hadamard. Okay. So, uh, in the context of this partial differential equation, he postulated that problem as well posted if their solution satisfies three conditions, which is going to be they are exist, they are unique, they depends continuously on the data set. These are the three particular conditions which have been proposed over there. So, problems that are not well possessed or ill possessed, for example, a differentiation is going to be an ill possessed itself, it is an ill possessed problem because some solutions need not depend continuously on the data. Okay, now, so that what happened? It is going to be an ill possessed. Another classic example is inverse kinematic problem in robotics. Uh, where one of one has to map an external real world movements of an arms into an uh, internal coordination system. That is going to be a, another example. So, in a similar fashion, the approximation problem we are addressing at present where we are trying to discover the smooth unknown mapping from input to output using a finite spare data set, which is going to be ill possessed because the solution to the problem is not an unique one, it is going to be a variable one. So, it is not a unique, it is going to be a common data where it is going to be get presence over there. So, that what happened in other words, sufficient data is not available to reconstruct the mapping uniquely. So, that to compound the problem further, the data points are generally noisy. So, that the inverse kinematic problem, the differential problem as well as the approximation problem are going to be ill processed so that we are going to move on to the approximation problem how it is going to be ill processed we will find a solution for that one. So, how to find a solution for that? The solution to this ill processed approximation problem lies in what is called as regularization. Okay, That is why I have said first about the problem and I am going to take the solution as a regularization. Okay. So, this regularization is going to be a solution for the ill-possessed approximation problems. 
so which essentially requires the introduction of certain constraints that imposes a restriction on to the solution space so the nature of this constraints is necessarily a problem dependent so regularization techniques uh, which were introduced by uh, uh, by a scientist and his colleagues, uh, I, I wouldn't remember the scientist name actually. So basically, which is going to impose a smoothness constraints on the approximating set of functions. It was argued that some degree of smoothness is going to be necessary for the representative function since it has to be robust against noise. So that especially which requires an introduction of a certain constraints that is going to be imposed on a restriction on the solution space. So necessarily the problem dependent as I said it is going to be necessarily a problem dependent and regularization technique imposes the smoothness with the constraints on the approximation set of functions as well some degree of smoothness is going to be necessary for the representative function since it has to be robust against noise. Understand? So, in the uh, present context, uh, when we use the uh, word smooth, we mean that small change in the input results in small changes in the output. Okay, now, so uh, as we are aware about that, if when I am going to make a small change in some input, obviously I can expect some changes in the output, maybe a smaller something different. Okay, this is a general and weak constraint that will make effective approximation possible. So, that we have to uh, go on to a particular function. So, let me discuss about a function so that it will be easy for us. Regularization risk functional. Regularization risk functional. So, here to uh, formulate our idea further, assume that we have generated a training data set. We are going to train a data set. So, T is equal to, we are going to Take a training data set T. T is equal to x k comma d k to the power of k minus one to k k is equal to one to q, and we are going to take that uh, x of k is going to be a subset of radial function uh, to the power to the power of n, and d of k is the subset of radial function by randomly sampling a function. So regularization technique replaces the standard error minimization problem with minimization of this regularization risk functional that comprises two terms. The first term is the usual error function that measures the distance between the training data, that measures the distance between the training data and the desired solution, distance between the training data and the desired solution, that is going to be the first function. The second term is going to be called a smoothness function, the smoothness function that takes into an account that smoothness of the solution and is a constraint that is going to be imposed. So our interest at present lies in finding a solution that is simultaneously, simultaneously close to the data point in the particular value t. Understand? And the smoothness as well the natural approach is to choose the solution that minimize the regularization risk functional which is going to be very important for us. So that we are going to take this regularization function compromises the two terms as we are aware about that R of f which is going to be a summation of i is equal to 1 to q di minus function of f of x i square plus the particular smoothness function. This is an error function, this is a smoothness function, two parameters, which is going to provide institutionally appeal to constrain using a function derivative to the characterize smoothness, to characterize the smoothness. Since uh, this is a minimization problem, the smoothness function, which is an map from the space of possible solution functions f as well uh, the real line which is going to show uh, or we should assume large value for non-smooth functions and small value for smooth functions. Since uh, non-smooth behavior is going to be characterized by oscillations as already we discussed about that one. So this is going to be intuitionally 
appealing to consider using a function derivatives to characterize smoothness. So, as illustrate uh, in the figure, if I am going to see about that one, I will show the figure over there as illustrate in this particular expression. We have seen the uh, diagram clearly as illustrated in this figure as where it is well, clear that smoothness can be measured by using a function that is going to be deal like this. Okay, This function is going to be deal in such a way. So, it was so clear for us to understand how actually this data are going to be get smoother with this particular functions. Such a way the regularization parameters are going to be get classified. So, the smoothness function is going to be expressed as the function which is going to be expressed as like this. So, where p is a linear differential operator such as d by dx or d square by dx square. Okay. So, the p is nothing but which implies d by dx or d square by dx square. Okay, such a way it is going to get present over there. In a single variable case, it has to be mentioned like that. So, this equation is going to be a norm defined on the function space to the particular uh, pi which is belongings to the particular point, which belongings to the particular pi. So, note that this function space is going to be a linear vector space of this functions on which a norm is going to be defined and it is typically a Hilbert space as already we have come across over there. A Hilbert space is an inner product space that is complete. In such a function space, a function can be represented by a vector or infinitely many dimensions. So, that the regularization risk function can be defined, can be defined as like from the above equation to be minimized and can be there, we can rewritten that expression as r suffix small r of f is equal to summation of the closeness to the data and the smoothness parameter, which is going to be called as regularization parameter. This is going to be called as regularization parameter, where a is going to be the particular a is going to be regularization factor, which controls the trade off between the particular closeness to the data. The first term which is going to be present over there that is going to be closeness to the data and smoothness of the function which is going to be the second term which is going to be present in this expression. So, the second term on the right side is also called as stabilizer that forces the approximation to become smooth as possible as. So, notice that <coughs> When the regularization parameter which is going to be lies between plus or minus 0, there is no smoothness constraints and the solution is going to be completely determined by the training data point. On the other hand, letting this value becomes plus or minus constraints, the final solution to be determined by the smoothness functional entry and smoothness functions entirely. So, that the regularization parameter thus represents a trade off between the closeness to the data and the smoothness. So, that this expression can be rewritten, this expression can be rewritten in such a way, the functional derivative of this particular thing which is going to be present in such a way, which can be rewritten into a particular expression. So, which is going to be fall into the Euler large Unit Lagrange equations. Okay. So, to find this approximating function f which minimizes the r value. We need to calculate the functional derivatives of this particular r, which is going to be called as the Fresen differential and which is going to set it equal to 0, much in the spirit of the extremization procedure for the simple function. So, that r can be defined as dr of f comma g which can be similarly to the d by d gamma of this particular value where gamma is equal to 0 and which can be a series of algebraic steps which heals the Euler Lagrange equation from this function. So, this is going to be d 
in this expression as like that one. This is going to be called the Euler Lagrange equation for this particular function r. So, such a way it is going to be present over there. So, with this we are going to solve the equalar Lagrange system. Understand? So, we will continue this in the next video. Thank you.